So I've been doing some redone and I picked up a good old nugget from the National Education Commission on Time and Learning. This was an independent submission entitled The Prisoners of Time. Hmm, I wonder who you're talking about. Every once in a while, a good old gobsmack is a good thing for us. It'll check you and wreck you. But check this quote out. That really opens up the, uh, the, the submission. Students are subjected to be inducted into the prison of time, baby, where learning is the prison's warden. Oh, snap, they done did it. The author of this study points out, so poignantly, that time is the missing element in our great national debate about learning. What's powerful about this is that the date of submission of this article was April of 1994. Keep that as your frame of reference and put that in your old pipe and smoke it. You know, for over 150 years, American public schools have held time... Time has remained a constant, but learning varies. Specifically, how students learn. Oh, you better make sure. Hmm, I wonder which armchair educator made the submission that all schools are equal and that all schools and all demographics deserve 180 school days and six to seven hour days. You gotta go all the way back to the War of 1812 when Oliver Hazard Perry and his mother of all mic drops, we have met the enemy and they are ours. Did you see what he did there? <laughs> Check it out, with very few exceptions, schools open and close their doors at fixed times in the morning and early afternoon. You know, you'd like to think that necessity would be the mother of all invention, but you gotta check yourself before you wreck yourself. Most schools still, despite recent innovations in the school scheduling and in calendars, they still remain at about nine months and they start at about the late summer and they end in the late spring. You know, you shouldn't be surprised if you see a big motivation of parents wanting to send their students to private schools and to potentially homeschool them. Why? Think about how much fluff is in a calendar day. I'm serious. Think about the fluff. Think about how much time is wasted. Hey, people got to get paid, right? <laughs> you know, the biggest frustration about this is that this is, this is not really a new issue. Time is not a new issue, so there's no need for a tissue. Check it before you wreck it. In 1894, U.S. Commissioner of Education William T. Harris argued in his annual report that it was a great mistake to abandon the custom of keeping urban schools open nearly the entire year. He published a document that can be published today. You know, and you just really have to think sometimes. Does it really bother us? Because when things really bother the collection of the republic, that's when people put their money where their mouth is, and they start voting with their wallets, and they start voting with their ballots, and they change policy with the power of the vote. So you know what? I've been doing some Sunday thinking. So, in my reflection and appraisal of the text that I read about the prisoners of time from April of 1994, I just want to review some of the recommendations that were uh, derived from that text. The commission thought that it was essential to reinvent schools around learning and not time. They recommended that there needs to be a commitment to bring every child in the United States to world-class standards and core academic areas. The number two recommendation made to the commission was to fix the design flaw, use time in new and better ways. They recommended that state and local boards work with schools to redesign education so that time becomes a factor supporting learning, not a boundary marking its limits. Number three, establish an academic day. What in the world does that mean? Well, the commission thought that reclaiming the academic day meant providing at least five and a half hours of core academic instructional time daily. Number four, keep schools open longer to meet the needs of children and communities. They recommended that schools respond to the needs of today's students by remaining open longer during the day and that some schools in every district remain open throughout the year. <laughs> All the armchair educators made the recommendation that they need to give teachers the time that they need. That's pretty laughable. They recommended that teachers be provided with professional time and opportunities they need to do their jobs. Okay. What's ironic is, coming from 1994, this is a pretty prophetic statement. Number six, this recommendation's rockin' and rollin'. Invest in technology. They recommended that technology be utilized and invested in and schools seize on the promise that new technologies will increase productivity, enhance student achievement, and expand learning time. Well, they hit the nail on the head there. The seventh recommendation was to develop local action plans to transform schools. They recommended that every district convene local leaders to develop action plans that offer different school options and encourage parents, students, and teachers to choose among them. Oh, really? And the eighth recommendation by the commission, share their responsibility. Finger pointing and evasion must end. 
I strongly disagree with this because you know what? The squeaky wheel always gets the grease, man. So you know what? This is a democracy. This is a republic that we live in. And you know what? If you, you know, I always think about one of my favorite quotes. You know, <laughs> quiet women never made history. Quiet men never made history. It's only the ones that decided to step outside their boundaries and rock and roll and, and push the boundary. Those are the ones that made affect, made the change. Growing up as a kid in the 90s, look, Christopher Wallace, the notorious B.I.G., he was my dude. Why? It was singles, rap tracks like Mo Money, Mo Problems. Well, see, that's not necessarily true for education. Hey, we'll take all the money we get. The more money we get, hey, we have less problems. Well, you know what I always say, necessity's the mother of all invention. Well, in the case of education, hey, if you got the money, honey, I've got the time. So generally, to wrap up this entire discussion, hey, I'm going to quote the great prophet Jay-Z. Somewhat. <laughs> I'm going to somewhat paraphrase. Education has 99 problems, but time is a big one. That's not exactly what he said, but that's what we need to say. Time is a big problem, and we need to fix it.